Hello and welcome to curl 7.86.0. This is October 26, 2022. And you know that already because it says so on the screen here. So this is um, a new release of curl. I shipped it a short while ago. And you know, uh, hopefully by now that I am Daniel. I work on curl. I am the lead developer. I founded curl a long time ago. I work for Wolf SSL. And today I am going to do a normal curl release presentation and talk you through what we've done in curl this time around with some numbers because I want to security stuff that are in particular and um, we have a lot of things to talk about there today. Follow me through some new features changes, some interesting bug fixes or interesting to me at least. I think they're interesting to you too. And some uh, re pending removals coming in the future of curl. I want you to be aware of and just consider and then something what's coming next or might come next. We will see about that. So this is release 211. We have done this for a while and we uh, don't see any end in sight, right? Then this time around, a lot of people helped out again as usual, I can almo almost say now. So 74 people contributed. They are credited in the release notes. Out of those, 43 were new. 42 persons uh, authored commits that we merged into Git during this release cycle. The release cycle being the eight weeks since the previous release. 17 of those commit authors were new. So we're still adding a lot of new authors as well to the team. 1,082 authors in total by now. We've been doing this for a while. You know that we, as I said, this is a typical release cycle, eight weeks, that's 56 days since the previous release. And we are now counting, we're soon, we're pretty close to 9,000 days since the first curl release in March 19. 98 was that. <coughs> anyway, let's d d dig into what we changed and fixed and, uh, and uh, worked with. So we fixed some th security related bugs this time and therefore we have security advisories around those bugs and we have no less than four of those security uh, advisories or security flaws to talk about today and I will tell you about them. The first one being, <coughs> um, so there's a lot of information on this screen. You can ignore most of it because I will talk you through it. This is the post following put confusion. Um, this is severed, severed medium and it was reported by Robbie Simpson. Basically, this is a, a, a libcurl flaw that might affect an application that first makes a put and then makes a post. And because some internal bugs that made it so you if you read the documentation you see that you would do a po put and then you would set some options to do the p a post but curl would due to a flaw not reset and use the new options properly so it would possibly send the wrong things in the follow-up uh, request not too likely to actually happen or or you know punish anyone but still a flaw that could end up uh, uh, making an application sending the wrong information possibly really bad information in the second request or revealing you know secrets or internals or whatever uh, silly bug this was not this was actually fixed in in git without us really r realizing the security nature of it so it, uh, it was already fixed in Git um, before we learned about it. And so you might have seen this if you follow the Git commits. Um, you might have seen it land weeks ago. Then um, Hiroki Kurosawa found this uh, CVE 2022 35 260. So the. <laughs> Hello, me. I. I polished the .NET RC parser a while ago. I think probably a year ago or so. Uh, well, polished. I changed it so that it would handle double quotes and stuff like that. So you could send spaces in, in uh, fields like the password and username. And when I did that, I also accidentally introduced a um, out of bounds access error, which is so you can, with a, with a crafted NetRC par, uh, file, 
it's not too crafted actually you basically just don't have to, uh, you have to not use a new line in it you can make curl uh, do an out of bounds access read mo uh, most easily but it could also actually write outside the if you manage to not crash on the read it could write to the buffer to um, stack based so pretty nasty really hard to do anything about and you uh, i mean uh, Typically, you control your own .NET RC file, so typically you just shoot yourself in the foot when you do this. And and really, an application should probably not allow just a random, you know, remote loaded .NET RC or something like that. So, um, a silly bug, but maybe it won't hurt too many users. Number three, then. Um, talk about hurting users this is um, HTTP proxy double free this was found by trail of bits in their ongoing now concluded uh, curl security audit and it's a severe to medium and we call it CVE 2022 42 915 and it's basically when you when curl uses an HTTP proxy to do um, and you can you know you can do basically any protocol through that proxy when it uses the HTTP connect request to uh, another server out there. You, so you can tunnel, you know, um, MQTT through that proxy if you just do HTTP connect properly. Uh, but for some of these protocols, when the protocol rejects that connect, but they often saying 403, or what, what, I don't remember exactly which uh, response code they use, but usually they deny uh, connecting to random ports like that so they say nip not allowed and in those in some of those cases with for some of those protocols curl would do a double free uh, it would free its own uh, memory pointer and then it would free it again later so that could then lead to really bad stuff severity medium difficult to exploit difficult to actually uh, take advantage of uh, in a nefarious way from an, from someone someone malicious here but it could happen this was not uh, i didn't really mention the rewards on the previous two but they we stick to the same reward scheme so low severities get 480 dollars medium severities get two thousand four hundred dollars and this particular one didn't get any reward at all because it's part of the security audit so they <laughs> they're actually hired to find these things so they are paid already um, so therefore not part of the bug bounty system but uh, a security problem so are you with me or have you fallen asleep yet so number four and uh, the fourth CVE this time and the last one 2022-42-916 also reported by Hiroki Kurosawa who reported one of the other ones so he said uh, he has two CVEs in this release rewarded 2400 USD <coughs> so um, this is a fun one or I, I'm not sure f fun in, in some air quotes maybe but if you use curl uh, with uh, IDN support, IDN as in international domain names, that's the IDN here mentioned several times. Um, <laughs> the IDN system has this weird thing. Uh, uh, I do not understand uh, why this was invented or created, but some of the uh, letters are just converted over to their ASCII versions. So, so as described on this short text here, the ideographic full stop is a Unicode. It, it looks like a little bit like a period. It's a more small circle, so sort of a, a, like a, a bigger period full stop, uh, like a little circle. If you use that instead of a real ASCII full stop period, um, you could circumvent the IDN. No, sorry, you could circumvent the HTTPS checks in curl because it would do the checks on the raw uh, IDN name and not the converted name. <coughs> um, so yeah, that was a surprise to me actually that you uh, that it <laughs> it had these features. But um, I learned this the hard way, and uh, Hiroki got uh, two thousand four hundred dollars for his find. 
And uh, that concludes the four security problems this time. We're now at a total of 130 reported CVEs since the dawn of time. We did some new things too as well. Uh, uh, once we've passed th through those uh, dreadful, boring uh, security related things, we did if we basically did two changes in this release that are new. Uh, in this cockpit of Carl, we first we removed the support for NPN. And if you don't know what NPN is, uh, that's good because you don't have to care about NPN because nobody is using it. Uh, all the browsers removed support for it a long time ago. NPN was a way to negotiate HTTP2 early on or the uh, speedy before that actually before speedy turned into HTTP2. So it was an early experimental feature thing, uh, TLS extension I should say, to negotiate another protocol than HTTP1. But already when uh, when HTTP2 was specified, when the draft was published in as an RFC in 2015, the method to do this is was already then formalized to be ALPN and it's been ALPN since then. Everyone is using ALPN. The browsers removed NPN many years ago. There's basically no users left in the world who are using NPN, so neither does curl now. So if you would ask for NPN or set the NPN option uh, in libcurl and stuff like that, nothing will happen. It'll just say, sure, go ahead, but it won't actually use NPN. It's gone now. Um, and and we, hence the the boring WebSock image in the beginning. We have experimental WebSocket support implemented and shipped in this version of curl. It's experimental, so you need to enable it yourself in the build to get it in there. So it, in in uh, unless you enable it, it won't be there because it's experimental. Experimental also means that we might change the API ABI behavior a little bit going forward. So uh, beware. But do try it out if you have if you have any interest in WebSockets, of course, and, and tell us about it because we want to polish it, improve it, make it better, and make sure that it actually works exactly the way we need it to and want it to. So basically, th with these two new URI, as they call it, schemes, I call them transfer protocols in this uh, graph, we can see that we now reach 28 trans supported trans transfer protocols in curl and libcurl um, yes Yoo and uh, this time around we had a really busy 56 days period and we have recorded 192 bug fixes actually the largest number of bug fixes fixed in any curl release ever before um, so yes a busy season and some of those bug fixes I want to talk to you about because I think they might be of interest. I thought, think they are interesting, so surely you think that as well. So a few libcurl uh, bug fixes we did mm, that might be interesting that we had a pretty big overhaul of the AWS SIG v4 authentication thing. It's a rather complicated authentication uh, and you know, it's, it hashes a lot of headers and blah, blah, blah. That, that's a lot of things. We have more coming for SIG v4 SIG support too, because there are some pending bugs as well. So, but if you're a user, this, you will find that this works better now. It will, we need to continue work on that to make it even better going forward, of course. But that pretty much covers everything, right? All areas. We now, Starting now, we reject cookie names and cookie content that contains the tab character. I blogged about this separately. It doesn't really work interoperably with other clients because other clients are all a little bit non-undecisive on exactly how to handle tabs in names or spaces like Chrome, for example, they reject them uh, at once if they if, if they contain tabs there. I think Firefox re rejects them if there's a tab in the name and it strips tabs in the content and curl accept used to accept them everywhere. So basically it doesn't really interoperate and th which tells me that nobody's actually using tabs in there widely. So we 
save ourselves some problems and issues by just also now ignoring them. The, this, the, um, I, I also brought it up, uh, th this issue up with the RFC team that are working on an update for their cookie specs, and I, th I think we should, uh, they, we all should say, should not use tabs in there for interop sake. I'm not sure where that is going to land. We might have a reason to go back to the tab issue in cookies in the future, and that will be fun. Uh, I removed or modified all the C-type functions in curl to become macros only. You know all those is, is ASCII, is number, is x digit, is control, is blank, or whatever, all those functions, typical C functions. We had our own set of those previously. Um, and, and this time around, we changed them all to become macros only, which which actually made the implementation a little bit smaller and a little bit faster, with basically no other major sort of downside. As a sort of parenthesis, there I also replaced a lot of is space checks with is blank instead, so. Then b the difference there being is blank allows only tabs and spaces, while is space also allows some other control characters. With this, I basically ma made a few curl parsers a little bit more strict to not accept random co uh, control characters in, in, in places. And talking about weird characters in places, a recent update to the ngHTTP2 library ngHTTP2 being the library we use for H2, right? So if you're using HTTP2 with curl, you're using ngHTTP2 or hyper, but hyper is still experimental, so that not that many people are actually using that. So tip, a typical curl install uses ngHTTP2, and a recent up version upgrade of ngHTTP2 started to re uh, return an error if it found a white space, a trailing or a leading white space in a header field, because that's what the recently updated HTTP2 specification says you should do, but that caused havoc, half the internet broke, basically no other clients uh, are that restrictive or um, maybe not restrictive, but strict, or so you know, read that section, read that section in the spec with those, uh, that strict implementation. So. Uh, it caused a lot of problems. For example, WordPress, a lot of WordPress installations used to send those uh, trailing white spaces, so it caused a lot of errors. And a lot of then scripts and applications that are built with curl using ngHTTP2 got errors and in all sorts of cases. So ngHTTP2 added an option to disable this strict check in a new release that they did. And now if you build curl and it detects that this version of NGHP2 has that new option, it can disable the strict check. <sighs> it's a complicated world. <clears throat> um, another annoying little, um, well, issue of course, bug is the it's, this is a regression too, that when you pass on a username in the URL, you know, when you ask for a resource and it says HTTP colon slash slash username at domain. Um, and if that user contained, for example, an at sign, you, you provide that URL encoded, like the at sign would be percent 40 for zero. Um, <coughs> And that's fine, but if you do that, uh, curl would mis not use that username correctly when it tried to find the password in the .NET RC file. Back again to the .NET RC. Uh, it's a complicated world. This is a regression. I fixed it, added test cases, so I hope we are good now going forward. Um, but hear me, .NET RC picking names and passwords, which one to use. It's it's uh, it's a little bit of a mess, maze, I would, mess and maze. Um, okay, going forward, we added support for the cert info um, 
feature when uh, doing quick quick being then the pro uh, transport protocol for HTTP 3 right so if you wanted to use the cert info when using HTTP 3 like you could with HTTP 2 and HTTP 1 now you can cert info being the feature that returns certification in uh, basically the entire chain of certs to the application um, <coughs> Another one of these really low level complicated matters in maybe not life but in curl. Uh, so how should I explain this? When you when you ask um, when you ask curl to do a transfer, you can say I I just want to do it a IPv4 only and and we've been doing this a little bit differently over the years, but basically you say, I want to do the transfer IPv4 only, but what does it mean that you, starting now, we have reverted a change we did a while ago, and now such a transfer will now only ask for A queries when, do the name re when it does the name resolve, as in get other info, will only ask for V4 addresses. Because it turns out there's, an when you run an application in the big wide world, and asking for both quad A's and regular A addresses, it is sometimes problematic. So by being able to go to switch down to IPv4 only, you can limit or reduce the amount of problems you get with IPv6 addresses when asking for them. Uh, this is a long, long journey uh, and, and a massive amount of problems back and forth over time. I hope that this will make things a little bit better. Um, I'm sure, or I, I'm not really sure, I fear that we will have reason to go back to fine polish this um, treatment or handling even more going forward because this is a, this is a tricky area really. And oh, usually it's, it's, a, it's a problem that is outside of Carl's control and we just have to deal with what we get and try to do it as good as possible. And the, what's as good as possible vary a lot depending on who you are and what problems you have. This weirdly phrased bug fix says when importing pfx disable key persistence. It's really it really doesn't at all say what I want to say. But basically, when you use curl and you use TLS provided by S channel, S channel being the Windows native TLS solution, a recent version of curl like I think the last two versions of curl could actually accidentally leave a file on disk behind uh, that would contain traces of uh, the t of TLS data, some RSA data, I believe, from basically, uh, I'm saying basically a lot. Um, there is a Microsoft API provided, I mean, S channel API for doing part of the TLS stuff that would write that file it would create the file and populate it i mean if you ask me that is an insane side effect of an api call in a tls system but anyway that happened and we just adjusted that now or fixed it so that by using it correctly it will not write a file to disk even when we use tls with s channel so um this <laughs> improve things a lot actually i mean leaving things behind in the file system that's that's nuts and uh, a really unfortunate side effect we introduced a new function this is an internal function of course so uh, outsiders will notice but if you read the source code you will find it and this uh, is it, i i added the function and i the name might be a discussion point for later but i call it curl timester um it being a string comparison function that has a constant time uh, behavior. D it actually always return uh, in the same time. It depends on the length of the strings, not of the contents of the strings, just because uh, it reduces the risk that anyone can uh, watch. We use it when comparing secrets. So you can, uh, by using this widely for comparing secrets, and outside observers have less information when you know trying to guess secrets for example guess a password guess a username and depending on 
I mean, this is just, you know, it, it's just a precaution. There's really no way anyone has ever successfully used that timing information for anything sensible, but this makes it even harder at least. So we just thought it was a good idea to do. So now it's harder to guess as an outsider. Um, there you have it. We also fixed a crash in uh, when doing a s s TLS session ID reuse in when you work with Wolf SSL as a, back a TLS backend. Uh, a silly mistake, but uh, now it works better. So those were some of the generic TLS finds. And so TLS, so, uh, sorry generic li libcurl library fixes but of course the url parser is part of a library but I, we did several things of, in, in there so i wanted to particularly just highlight those first or maybe not first but at least i did i i've uh, worked on uh, making the url parser leaner in that it is now faster it makes a lot less or fewer allocations you know, alloc stirred up uh, separate things. So it, it runs faster now. It runs, I think, around five, depending on exactly what URLs you're using, of course. But on my set of fairly short URLs, it runs a few percent faster, like 5% faster in it. And it uses uh, maybe half of the allocs and half of the memory. And so much leaner, much fa uh, slightly faster. And you, you can, of course, argue why a URL parser makes allocations at all. But it needs, since the allocation has an API, uh, sorry, the, the parser has uh, exposed as an API for how to set and, and extract parts from it. So it needs allocations to do things and to store things. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I also improved how to, how the you parser extracts the scheme out of URL. Basically, uh, the scheme being, you know, the initial part, HTTP or Gopher or LDAP before the colon slash slash, that's the scheme. Uh, and this description says when not guessing because curl has this guess, guess the scheme logic. So if you provide a, uh, just a host name, curl will guess what scheme it is. And by uh, by just uh, using the fact that some often when you use the parser, it you don't allow it to guess. And when you don't guess the scheme, it can parse the scheme much better. It's not that complicated. But I found another flaw, or I didn't find this flaw. I fixed this flaw. Uh, this was reported by Trailer Bits. The, when parsing a URL that doesn't have a slash, but it has a query part, and you're using this particular option in the uh, URL parser, basically asking curl to URL encode it if it can. Used, for example, if the, if there's a space somewhere in the, pa in the path or in the query. And I um, mean, yeah, a URL shouldn't have a space there because then it's not a URL anymore, according to some specs. But anyway, curl supports that and uh, it had a bug in there if you use that option and now it doesn't anymore. Um, the curl, the curl URL parser originates from this tradition, or should I call it, um, how we started out with the with the parser is that it was very permissive, it basically and very liberal, accepted everything as long as we could extract something from it and 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 go forward and use it. And over time, over the years, basically, we've made it more and more strict to make it more and more a real parser, so that you could use it more better and better as a verifier that the string that you pass to the parser is actually a valid URL. And part of this progress and part of this development, we, we also now uh, realized, or again, Trailer Bits reported that we accepted far too many random weird bytes as a host name when you did a URL, kind of URL call blah, 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 and the host name could contain weird characters and curls, uh, URL parser would accept that. I mean, in in a typical case, it would just fail in the next step because you can't really have those letters bytes in host names anyway. So it, it would usually then just turn into an error in the next step. But it was wrong to accept them. And now 
curl doesn't do that anymore. We did a few fixes in the curl tool. I, I'll first just mention that if you use dash dash SSL, we now output a warning. It is an in insecure option is in that it's only an advisory option to, to the system to libcurl. So basically asks for use this if you can, which is a lousy way to do TLS as you can imagine, because you don't, as a user, you might not even notice if it uses TLS or not, but if it doesn't, it's very insecure. And if it does, if it uses it, it's safe. So there's another option to use called SSL REQ, R -E -Q -D, as in required. That's the option to use instead, which then fails hard if it can't use TLS. If you used curl, you know, the curl dash upper Z or dash dash parallel, you can do parallel transfers with the curl two, and it can do, it defaults to 50 in, par in par parallelism level 50. That means up to 50 transfers in parallel and basically unrestricted amount of parallels. So, and you, if you use globbing or just a bus load of, of URLs that could end up becoming a huge amount of transfers. Someone came up with some globbing use cases with a few million transfers. Um, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing a few million transfers. That's fine. But a mistake in curl made it basically create and queue up depending transfers too eagerly. So it would create internally. This will this will be a transfer. This will be a transfer. This will be a transfer. And if you if you ask for a few million transfers and it queues up. Uh, all, all, almost all of those uh, ahead of time and you use a few megabytes or uh, kilobytes per transfer uh, a few million transfers easily uh, created a few gigabytes or many gigabytes of um, used memory for those queued up transfers completely unnecessary and wrong so i fixed that and so now you can do those millions or hundreds of millions of transfers and they will not use more memory than they have to so um, basically they use memory while they are in transit and they use very little memory when they're not so a few hundred million transfers uh, no problems starting now some build things we fixed always interesting to improve the build we added and i will get back to this but we have added a deprecated builds with small curl of t that's the generic type we have in curl for 64-bit types or larger types and we no longer by default support this being smaller this being 32-bit i would say smaller than 8 bytes which means smaller than 64-bit it will error in, in the configure script and you actually need to use a separate option to override that but you should be aware that we are planning to remove this support i accidentally and i haven't really noticed but ngtcp2 it tried to find it by default even if you didn't ask for it i think in most cases it all it just failed to d find it in because it's still experimental but now it's uh, more explicitly it's, it's disabled by default you need to enable the ngtcp2 searching or building if you want it and uh, we now set the GNU 89 standard in more builds to help us all detect uh, c89 compliance uh, mistakes better really for some reason we also didn't set o2 as the default optimize when we build with clang we haven't for a very long time i suppose it's not a big issue because i guess most people override it or those who use clang override it anyway when they build in, in distros and stuff and if they didn't they will now get it more optimized than they did before in builds by default so <coughs> documentation fixed a lot of documentation of course um, usually i don't highlight those documentation fixes we did in uh, and if you look at those 192 bug fixes for this release a lot of them were fixes of documentation which you can argue or if they're bug fixes or not but i argue that they are um, and this time around i i did the <coughs> extremely tedious work of adding a spell fix ci job to to curl so now when you try to when you make a pull request or you commit it will it will 
run a spell check on all man pages in curl. It will also actually spell fix a, little, a few other files, but anyway, it spell fixes all the man pages, and that was uh, it. Tr it was <laughs> complicated to add, and it ma made me uh, have to work qu pretty hard, and you know, fix spelling errors, make sure that we quote things that shouldn't be spell checked at all. You know, adding weird words to the spell checker's word list and, and things like that. So it took me took a long time uh, and was uh, pretty boring and tedious work. But now I think it will help us to keep the level uh, and make the documentation even better. And um, of course, I realized I also took away um, the opportunity for a few peeps to submit pull requests with spell fixes. But hey, I up my game, you up your game. Um, <coughs> I also, uh, in in the spirit of improving the documentation, I did another tedious thing. So we have 248 command line options in curl. And starting now, I, I added a uh, keyword for each option. So uh, no, the, I added a keyword in each um, file that we use for for documenting e each option so i mean for for every option we now have to specify how it works when you use that option more than once in the command line um, so you basically as a, so whatever option if you use dash dash um, data what happens if you use that more than once if you use dash dash NPN, what happens if you use that more than once, and so on. For all of those options, what happens if you use that more than once? And when, I'm, when the man page then is generated, that information is included in the output in the man page for every option. So now, all 248 options now have uh, that little detail explained in, in a coherent and a unified manner. And uh, I think it makes it better. It was a lot of work to do there, but um, yeah. and as I mentioned, we are going to remove two things from curl in the future. I didn't mention those two things. I mentioned one of those things, but anyway, I, I want to particularly highlight that we are removing support for builds with without, I should say, without 64-bit data type. So if you don't, if your compiler C89 compiler doesn't have long, long or <coughs> an other alternative to get a 64-bit data type, curl will no longer build for that with that compiler on that system starting March 2023. <coughs> and I want to emphasize that this um, most 32-bit systems have these 64-bit data types. So this is not say I'm not saying that so we need 64-bit systems. This is just the 64-bit data type that we will set uh, as mandatory, because there are just so few systems left around out there that actually don't have this data type. So to keep the support for systems without this data type is turns out like a diminishing return really because I don't think there's anyone, any user anymore on those systems. So why support it? It just makes it harder in the code, harder for testing and all of those theoretic, oh well what about this case when it's only 32 bit and do what do we do then? Uh, um, and so this hopefully this will make things clearer, better in the code starting March. And I'm, I'm mentioning these removals, so if if you sh feel hurt, targeted, and you think, what? I'm not going to survive this, then tell us about it and we can reconsider, debate it, tweak it, uh, anything. We are also planning to remove support for NSS to TLS library in August 2023. NSS being a uh, TLS library, we have supported for uh, almost uh, maybe well 15 years at least um, so um, basically the the usage has shrunk significantly over, over the years over time there are no me knowingly no um, it's not used by anything by default anymore any node Linux distro no 
users really well there's one exception and that exception made me postpone this removal idea until august 2023 it was actually already planned to happen previously but anyway so if if you feel strongly for any of these things uh, let us know otherwise they will be removed from curl at, at these dates <coughs> And other things going forward, we are most likely going to call the next release 7.87.0 because we have a bunch of things pending uh, that we uh, want to merge that will require a bump of the minor number. Some of the things uh, <coughs> is, for example, my proposed new command line option, the 249th, if I get to land it first, maybe. Uh, there are a few other proposed command line options as well so maybe anyway this is my proposed way to add query parts to a url basically there's an existing pr you can go there and read about up about it it's um it's intended to help uh, users to build query parts into you in the url at the same time as you use maybe a post so maybe you use data URL encode, blah, 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 blah. And you can use URL query, blah, 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 to build the query parts and um, it should be post at the same time. I've heard it from users who have requested it before. The idea was brought to me, on, uh, we discussed it on Twitter. So I know at least some users uh, will be happy uh, for some s kind of feature in, in that spirit. Maybe not exactly like that, but in that spirit. I think that way of working is pretty good and I'm reusing a lot of code, so it was pretty easy to actually add this. So there's a pending PR. It's been going on for a while. It has a lot of comments and there's a lot of activity in that IPFS for curl and it's actually not native IPFS. It is IPFS via an HTTP gateway and it's only for curl, not for libcurl because of this, because it's not actually IPFS. It just looks like IPFS um there's a pr for that it's getting closer we are looking into moving feature names feature names into the curl version info data struct as an array of names instead of using features as bits in a bit mask just as a sort of step into the um, in a world when we go beyond 32 features and you know feature bits is complicated when we go when we have them in bit marks bit masks and we populate the bitmarks all the way up and there, how do we go beyond 32 or 64 or whatever bounder we have. So we're switching to name-based features as we have switched to name-based protocols previously to avoid the 32 or bitmask related issues. We get other issues instead, but hey, we prefer those because they, they're not bound to 32 bits. There's a patch for multi adding support for multipath TCP in curl that looks fun um that's also another command line option by the way so maybe that will be the 249 uh, okay um that at least adds support for the linux way of doing multi-path tcp we'll see about um i mean uh, mac also has it supported so we should be able to use it there as well there's an a, a fun pr for reducing cr certificate bundle reparsing basically this uh, means that curl would load and reparse CI certificate bundles less. And if, uh, for some use cases, that's a significant uh, CPU, I mean, a significant performance boost to avoid that. So if you can avoid it, things could run much, much faster and smoother. So this, uh, this was, will be appreciated by users at least in some cases, in many cases, actually. And still uh, pending this option curl up quick exit with, I talked about it before. I still wanna land it. I'm still not super happy about the name, but I might just ignore that. And it's about not waiting for name resolver threads when exiting basically. And then by that risking a memory leak body, but exiting much faster. Whew. Those are, what is it, five, six things that we probably are going to land. Um, maybe, maybe not all of that will happen, but 
ideally that and usually people also bring up other things so i'm sure something else will happen as well and we're looking at shipping 7.87 uh, in december on december 21 <coughs> that's 56 days from now and if you're curious about what we're sort of have landed and what the pro what it looks like to what the next version looks like uh, this is the pending release notes always updated uh, along the way along the journey in the release cycle so go there read up and, and you'll see what what we've done since this release <coughs> we of course have the goal of shipping curl version 8 in march 2023 we're getting closer this was released 211 by if we stick to the schedule properly version 8 will be released 214 so we're just three releases away this is the th so two more than version 8 if you have any problems you want your app to run in production uh, commercial support is available i do this for you get in touch if you have any issues with curl submit your bug reports over here of course um, and uh, if you have anything that is security related you know, suspect a security problem somewhere file it at hacker one and we will give you a monetary reward if we confirm it to be a security problem and you know you follow the entire dance there correctly and of course we have a bunch of excellent uh, sponsors of the project we are grateful to those and they really make it possible for us to have the bug bounties pay for the services and uh, do fun things <coughs> thank you to all of this and all of you who are uh, making sure that we can keep on uh, working cur on curl like this so um with this i uh, want to say thank you this is curl dot this is curl 7.86.0 and um I will see you uh, later at another curl release.